I remember a few years ago when I came here to hold a three or four night seminar. We stayed over 60 nights. But I'm thankful to this church to allow that to happen because I see all over the different parts of the country, different parts of the world I go to, the result of that particular meeting. For an example, I was sitting over there just thinking about that. The Lord brought it to my attention. This past Easter Sunday, I was in a church in Miami, Florida that's got 2,200 people. And when that revival broke out, they had this little teeny church. I went and held them their first seminar. And then they must have had maybe, I don't know, 100 people, 125 people. Then I got Lester to go help me go hold a seminar for them. And because we held a seminar for them, they tuned in that revival like every night. And they just kept on building, and kept on building, kept on building. Now they have, they, they got the vision. And now they've got 2,200 people in their church. But I see things like that happening all over the country from that particular revival that I hear from this church. Oh, but the normal when using, when using the uh, Word of Faith Church, Robert Hilton's ministry in Dallas, Texas, our church got so revived, it was about a half dead, and it got so revived. Well, we're here for one reason again, to bring you to God. Amen. If I can get you to God, Brother Hagin prophesied to me some years ago, in Ramah one time I was teaching and several hundred people got up out of their seat and just ran down the front, hit the steps and started crying. And the spirit of prophecy came on Brother Hagin and he came up and began to walk the floor and prophesied. And he prophesied to me that my ministry was being changed from that night, that day, that night forward. A change was coming into my ministry that the Lord said that he had wanted, wanted me to have more mass altar calls. He says, because when people come, come to me and run to me, he said, I could move up on them much quicker. He said, you would have mass altar calls. And so a lot of times they do. They just have mass altar calls, and that's what happened when that heart moved over. They just come running down in front in the First Assembly of God Church. And so I believe that I know that the Lord would... I was on a national television program here a while back, and they asked me a question. How come God does so many miracles, unusual miracles, in your ministry, Mr. Hayes? And I said, I don't really know. I said, he just does it. Uh, don't ask me why he does it. He just does it. I said, I, he's giving me a ministry to get people to believe him. I said, if I can get people to trust God, I says, he, he'll do it for them. At ORU and the Maybe Center, uh, some time ago, there were several thousand people there that night. And so I said, you know, and I told him, I said, you know why God won't heal you? Some may be sitting out there wondering why. Why won't God heal me? Why won't God do this for me? Why won't God straighten out my crooked leg? Why won't God heal me? I said, there's only one reason why God won't heal you or anything else that you need is because you don't know how to get him to do it. You understand what I said to you? You don't know how to get him to do it. As soon as you find out how to get him to do it, he'll do it for you. Amen. Do you understand that? And we'll do our best the next four days and four nights to get you to learn and teach you and increase your knowledge. God loves you wherever you sit, if you're broke or rich or whatever. But the only, the only thing you have to have, see, God deals in knowledge. God don't even deal in, he don't even work in dealing in ignorance. God is not ignorant, he don't deal in ignorance. He deals in knowledge. You understand that? So if you're ever going to get anything from God, you're going to have to increase your knowledge. You know, we only know a little bit, but God knows everything. All things are possible to him that believeth. That's what we're going to do for four days, to so try to get you to believe us. Better come this week and bring all your flaky friends. <laughs> if you have your Bibles real quick, like, I want to show you a lifestyle that God wants you in. Turn with me, please, the book of Job, chapter 36. And this is a lifestyle that you want in. This is a lifestyle that you should be in. This is a lifestyle that's easy to obtain. It's easy to get. And if you don't have it and if you're not living there, then you can learn this week how to do it. I'm going to teach you this, this morning, basically, the foundation of it. But there's some, also some things that goes along with it. The lifestyle that you want, everybody yearns for, everybody hungers for, the Lord Jesus Christ paid the price for it. It's called the abundant life, promised to you by God himself in the Old Testament plus the New. Blessed be the name of the Lord. All right. Uh, Job chapter 36. Verses 11 and 12. But you have to learn to obey God. That's the reason you read the Bible. He wants you to obey the Bible. If they obey and serve him, that's you. Obeying him is doing what he says. 
believe in his promises. Serving him is getting involved in the ministry of helps. Serve the Lord with your own talent. The Lord told me one time, I was up in Kenneth Copeland in a convention one time, and I was getting ready to speak at 2 o'clock session, about 7,000 people there. <laughs> and the Lord whoosh, moved in on me in my room and says, uh, teach this afternoon the son on beware of dead talent. I never taught it before. So that was my first time. And he started giving it to me. I was getting dressed for the meeting. He started giving it to me just like this. Piano players, quartet singers, soloists, trios, all the preaching, teaching, Bible, school, Bible teaching, Sunday school teachers, all the ministry of helps that makes the church tick, tick, tick successfully. And uh, the Lord says, tell him, I said, beware of dead talent. Your talent dead? Did you used to play a piano for a quartet when you were young and you went from church to church playing the piano and you saw people saved? Uh, but, uh, uh, but you know, Brother Norville, I, I don't have time to do it no more, Jesus, because I got married. Jesus, I got married and I, I had some children, so I had to put you on the back burner way back. I have a tickle of the ivories for God and... Uh, Oh, 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, I used to, though, Brother Norval. I used to. Do you understand, Brother Norval? I used to. No, I don't understand. Neither does God. What did you lose your talent for? What did you stop for? God told me to tell you to be aware of a dead talent. It means serving him with your talent. I received a special letter from Kenneth Hagin here a while back that was mailed to his board, board members and some of his special friends, it was not for the public. And Brother Hagin made a statement in that letter, you know, that really stood out to me. He said, where your talent is at, that's where your ministry is at. Don't you know that? And I looked at that and I says, well, bless the Lord. Where your talent is at is where your ministry is at. See, God's given you talents. Not just one talent, he's given you talents. But unless you serve him, you'll never know what they are unless you serve him. When you start serving God, it's amazing the talents that comes out of you when you start doing the little things for God. The Pentecostal preacher trained me with that years ago. He says, Norval, start doing the little things. I said, what's the little things? He says, did you ever feed the poor? And I said, no. Did you ever help little homeless children? And I said, no. I go to the First Baptist Church. He says, well, if you'll, start, if you'll start getting involved in the ministry of helps, and you'll help the Lord. Everybody say, help the, help the Lord. Ministry of helps. When you help somebody else, it's helping the Lord. The Lord says, as you do it to them, you do it to me. I mean, God makes it very specifically and very clear about you clothing people that's not clothed, that needs clothing, that you feed people that's hungry, that you visit hospitals when they're sick, you visit homes when they're sick, and you visit jails when they're in jail. Do you understand that? The Bible makes us very... Jesus said, when you do these things unto those that are in that shape, you do it unto me. And the Lord said, if you refuse to do it to them that's in bondage, you wouldn't do it to me. You only think you would, but you wouldn't do it to me. You understand? But God says, if you'll do it for me, I'll give you anything I want. It's called obedience and serve me. Obedience and serve. Now look what it says. In verse 11, if they, they means you, it don't mean the world, it means you that knows him. Sitting here this morning, most of you. And they, if they, not he will, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. Glory to God forevermore. Spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Well, God did it for me. Why would he do it for you? But he won't do it for you doing your own thing. You have to get involved with him in the ministry of helps and help people. And also you have to get involved with God doing the easiest thing in the world is praising him and worshiping him. I was at a church in California one Sunday morning teaching and God moved up on me and said, son, 
Many people walk in this big church this morning. Many people walk in this big church this morning. He said, they're sick because they don't worship me enough. And many, several girls in this particular congregation, now that's one church. Think about all the churches in America. Several girls in this one church, son, he said, they're barren and cannot give birth to babies because they don't worship me enough. But I'm a miracle working God. He said, if they'll, if they'll worship me more and praise my name more, he said, I will give them children of their own, blessed be God forever, and my healing power will come to them, and prosperity will come to them if they have the knowledge. All right, that's what we're going to do this week is increase your knowledge. Lee is a preacher. I'm a teacher of the word, you understand? Lee is a preacher. Bob Hilton is a preacher. Of course, Bob can also teach. But verse 12, now look at 12. But if they obey not, they shall perish by the word, by the sword. They shall perish by the sword, and they shall die without knowledge. Well, blessed be God forever. I don't believe that you should live, I don't believe you should live in lack all of your life, and then die without knowledge, and not receive anything to speak of from God. Well, the most important thing in the world to you is first things first. You know what you were born to do? You were born, the first thing you were born to do, you were born to praise and serve the Lord and worship the Lord. You are born to praise and worship God first, then out of duty you serve Him because that you love Him. And it's your duty to serve Him. It's your duty to serve Him. It's your duty to help people that needs help. That's the way God can show His love to the world is helping people that needs help. So you say, well, where do, I, where do I find out? How do I learn to praise the Lord? How do I learn to worship the Lord? Well, every, every church member, I, I'm sorry to say that there's hundreds and thousands of them that can't because they don't do that in the church where they go. But uh, you're supposed to go to a church where they praise God and worship Him without shame. Now, real quick, like Psalms 111. And I'll show you. You're supposed to learn in the sanctuary, and in the assembly of the upright, and in the congregation, you're supposed to learn to praise the Lord and worship the Lord. If you're visiting and say, well, Brother Norville, the church I go to, they don't praise the Lord, they don't worship the Lord. In services, we just sing songs and preach sermons and, and, and pray prayers. But we don't praise the Lord and we don't worship Him. What do you think I ought to do? Well, if you ever want to get anywhere with God, you probably should go to church someplace else. <laughs> Verse, Psalms 111, because God said it right here. Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. Praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. That's where you're at right now. So just show God that you, you will do it for, for about 10 seconds right now. Turn your, turn, turn your face toward heaven. Praise Him. Out loud. Strong. Praise Him. Out loud. Worship Him. Praise Him. Praise His name. Praise His name. Get used to that. Praise His name. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. All right, let me have your attention now. When you go home, you can finish. <laughs> All these things I told you about working for the Lord, listen to what God thinks about His church and about you, you working for Him, helping people that's beaten down. Look at verse 2. <laughs> the works of the Lord are great. Did you know your church is great? Amen. Did you know your, did you, you, who you learn and praise is great in here? And did, you learn, did you know that every mission, every mission outreach you have, to God is great to help somebody. Do you understand that? Let's read the second verse again. The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. Work for God with pleasure. Blessed be God forever. Verse 3. His work is honorable and glorious, and His righteousness endureth forever. It don't make no difference. People, what people says about TV evangelists or anybody else, or make fun of this or make fun of that, the world. What, what does the world know? They don't know anything. And always remember this. You can't learn something from somebody that don't know anything. <laughs> what, are you, what are you going to learn? What in the world are you going to learn about God from Diane Sawyer? <laughs> I mean... It, <laughs> give me an ABC Sawyer break. says his church and his work in verse 3 his work is honorable and glorious and his righteousness endures forever 
And he hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Made his works to be remembered. There's one thing for sure. Bob Tilton's children will never forget him. <laughs> the works he's doing for God, I guarantee you, they'll, they'll remember it the rest of their life. Every time the devil sticks his head up and starts, tries to do something to one of them, they'll remember. Oh yeah, that same devil had to do this to my daddy. But my daddy was a fighter, so I guess I better be a fighter. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And besides that, the Lord told me one time, he said, Son, there's not been one person ever died of starvation uh, since Adam while they were worshiping me. He said, curses don't come up on people that worship me. Curses of the world does not come up on people that worship God. He said, no person has ever died of starvation while they were worshiping me and praising me. Not one human being ever died. If, if Ethiopia today, where there have been so many thousands, died with starvation, if they would bow their knees before God, look up to heaven and begin to worship the Lord and praise Him, I'm telling you the rains would come. And the fruits would come. And the vegetables would come. And they'd be selling all their excess stuff to other nations. But if you're going to take on a false god and deny, deny God and have your own God, well, you might as well look out. I can prove it to you from the Bible. A curse will come up on your country, up on your land, and a curse will come up on you also if you ever start worshiping another, another God besides the Lord Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Look at, look, at verse, look at verse 5. He hath given meat unto them that fear Him. Now, King James Version says fear. Now, when King James translated the Bible, not every place, but some of the places that had worship, he, he put fear or fear. So, um, let, me, let me put it back like the Hebrew Bible, the Holy Ghost wrote. Uh, he hath given meat unto them that worship him. Everybody say worship him. Amen. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He hath showed his people the power of the works, of his works, that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. Blessed be God forever. The works of his hands are very in judgment. All of his commandments are sure. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Drop with me down. Don Clare got up this morning, you know, and he read this, but I'm going to close with. He, he, he read these verses of Scripture. And I punched Lee Valentine. And I said, well, I don't know. Revival may come. He's reading my Scripture. <laughs> the Holy Ghost may be in this thing. He's reading my Scripture. Now, now look, at, look at Psalms 112. On your piece of paper there, I, I have to teach it. Now, Don read it to you. He, he, he commented on it. Uh, if you have a piece of paper, put it on 1, 2, 3, real quick, Black. Psalms 112. Now, in, in 1, put down, pra praise the Lord. Number 2, worship the Lord. Number 3, Bible reader. Those three things. Those three things. Now, listen to me, church. Those three things is what bogged you down from success and living a life of pleasure. The Lord God Almighty that made you, nobody don't know you like God knows you, God knows you. The world don't know anything about you. If you've been born again, God knows you. And God says that he wants you to be successful with prosperity and a life of pleasure. But first of all, he wants you to obey him and get involved in the ministry of helps and be faithful to the church. Then he says prosperity follows that. Prosperity follows that and, and, and the life of pleasure. All of your days in pleasure. I don't ever have any days except days of pleasure. I haven't had a blue Monday in years. Don't ever intend to have another one. God told me one time, he said, I don't have any blue Mondays. Why do you have them? I said, I don't know. Stupid, I guess. <laughs> well, I don't have any blue Mondays. I said, well, neither do I from now on. So I don't have any blue Mondays. Blessed be God forever. Because if I don't have any, why should I have any? All right. Now, follow me closely. You got one, two, three down. All right. First of all, you, 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 every day of your life, you need to praise the Lord. Now, I know you're learning in church now. Now, we've, we've, I've left the church now. We left the church over in Psalms 111. You understand that? Now, the church is going to be over, like I shared a few minutes. The church is over. Now, we're gone home. Now, it's Monday morning. Everybody say, in my house. That's where, it's, that's where you get robbed at because so many people go to church on Sunday and do and obey God, but they do their own thing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. But the Lord says what you do in secret, now listen to what it is. Everybody say, Jesus is in the rewarding business. 
the Lord said, what I see you do in secret, I will reward you openly. Blessed be God forevermore, forevermore, forevermore. Blessed be his holy name. And the Lord told me one time, he said, son, the church is sadly lacking. I said, I don't know what you mean, Lord. Churches love you. I said, I've got all kinds of different churches. They love you. I know they love me, but some they live beneath their means. Spiritually, mentally, physically, and financially, they're about a half wreck. They live beneath their means, and for only one reason. They don't worship me and praise me enough. Now listen closely. Worship me and praise me enough in their own home. Privately. You want to make God happy? Do you want to please the Lord? Then start worshiping and praising Him in private where nobody in the world can see you except God. Except God. Well, if I, watch the, if I do that, what will happen to me? Uh, well, let me show you what will happen to you at your house with you and your children. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that, well, it says, King James it says feareth, but the Hebrew Bible, the Holy Ghost, so it says worship. Blessed is the man that worships the Lord that delighteth in his commandments. His commandments means the Bible. Have respect for the Bible. Now, if you do these three things, if you, everybody say, if I, if I praise the Lord, I praise the Lord. In, private, in private, if I worship the Lord in private, I the Lord in private. and I study the Bible in private, I study the Bible in private, but if I do that at my home in private, what will happen to my children? Can you tell me? Oh, I can tell you because God tells you. Look at verse 2. If you do those three things, your seed, meaning your children, shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Glory to God. Your seed shall be mighty upon earth. Well, Brother Norval, uh, my, my children are in sin and, and in drugs. Well, you better, do, you better hit, your, hit the floor real quick like on your knees. To start worshiping God in your house and calling their name before God and telling the devil, you can't take my children to hell. <laughs> then if you'll do it, you can send the gap for your children. I got a book on my table that tells you how to send the gap for your children. I send the gap for mine. And now then, that same little girl, Zona, that like to draw me nuts. <laughs> can you believe this? She's my Bible school director. Oh, brother. <laughs> Bible school director. And her husband quit his career, now he's the dean of students at my Bible college. Glory to Jesus. Now they both go whole meetings. And no telling what. And the little, little teeny girl, her daughter looks like me, she cast out devils. <laughs> she gets her dolls, lines them up against the wall. She gets her dolls and shakes them and says, come out. Well, Shambach first saw her, he says, Novel, this baby looks like you. I said, well, she's supposed to, praise the Lord forever. I said, she's cast, I'm, I'm going to teach her to cast out devils. He says, oh, brother. He said, I'm going to change, I'm going to pray God to change this baby's looks. His seed shall be mighty upon earth, the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Now then, verse 3. Now, you're not ready for this. But you're going to get, you, this morning you're going to get it twice. You got it from Donnie, you're going to get it from me. Everybody say, if I praise the Lord. I praise the Lord. And if I worship the Lord. I worship the Lord. And if I read my Bible. I read my Bible. In private. In private. At my house. At my house. That causes God. That causes God. To come to my house. To come to my house. Say, Brother Norval. Brother Norval. What will God bring to my house? When he comes and visits me, if I do those three things at my house, what will God put in my house? Verse 3, please. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord forevermore. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. But the normal, I don't have no wealth and riches in my house. Well, you better go to the back room, hit the floor. <laughs> Glory to God, I worship you, Lord. 
When you worship God from your house, it goes up into heaven. And I'm telling you, when you praise God and worship Him from your house, study His Word in your house, and you praise God and worship Him in private in your house, you get God's attention. He opens up the windows of heaven and begins to pour out blessings upon your house. With supernatural knowledge, with health, with finances, with joy, with wisdom, with peace, with contentment, with faith, with patience. And besides, if you don't have patience in your own human spirit, faith don't work properly for you. You understand that? Say, oh, well, I'm gonna I have a lot of needs, Brother Noble. Well, I'm going to start doing that. Start doing what? I'm going to start worshiping the Lord, praising Him, studying His Bible at my house where nobody can see me. I'm going to worship the Lord in private where nobody can see me. I said, uh-huh, but I'll get to you. God will see you, and God will come to see you. He'll come to your house to see you, and wealth and riches shall be in His house, and His righteousness endureth forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You might say, you, you, you might say today, Brother Norval, I have a child that's backslid. I need, to, I need to be healed physically. I'm telling you, my pocketbook is empty, Brother Norval. I need going to have to have some help. Oh, really? All right. Lay your Bible down. If, you, if, if, if you're not ashamed to worship God in public and praise His name, it's a very simple process, but you've got to start at the foundation. If you don't have a foundation to start with, you're not going to get anywhere with God. I'm just telling you you're not. You just go around and say, well, I got knowledge of this, and I got knowledge of that, and I got knowledge of this. Well, it's what you do. It's fine to have knowledge, but what you do? Or what do I do? Well, don't be ashamed of God. I want you to do this morning in church what I want you to do at your house next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, in private. You understand that? Well, I don't know what your need is, but God does. You say, well, I got one, Norval. If you got one, you want, you want God to make you want to make contact with God. Jump up out of your seat right quick. Run down here. Throw your hands up and worship God. Him and worship Him. Praise Him and worship Him. Praise Him and worship Him. Lift your voice to heaven. Blessed be God forever. Lift your voice to heaven. Let heaven hear you.
Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be God forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord told me to tell you, when you spend time worshiping Him and praising Him, it causes His healing power to be released unto you. You could receive, when you're praising Him and worshiping Him, you, you, you could receive a vision from the Lord. He tell you about your ministry. Tell you about a piece of property. Tell you about a piece of property. It's worth a lot of money that you don't know it is, and you buy it real cheap. He can, he can impart to you a, a, a thousand and one things when you're praising Him and worshiping Him because you're in His presence and you praise Him and worship Him and worship Him and praise Him and worship Him. Blessed be His holy name.